So we're working with Eastern European countries as well as working in Italy. We're working with women's groups and say, what can we do to prevent the problem of prostitution? What can we do to address the issue of demand? Our European Baptist Federation Anti-Trafficking Network did its last resource books for churches on the issue of demand. How do we talk about sexuality in our churches? How do we teach young men and young women that we all are made in the image of God and that men shouldn't buy sexual services, uh, women should value themselves so that they would not be in a situation or put themselves in a situation to be vulnerable to being trafficked outside of the country, uh, all of that sort of thing. I'm working with Italian Baptist women. Uh, on the left, you see Miriam, who went with me to a conference in Amsterdam to learn about the issues. We're hoping that Miriam and the women's group in the Church of Vigo, of which she is a part, will do a project locally in their city to reach out to trafficked women. But that also they'll uh, do a project in their church on the issue of demand, uh, helping young men in their church and men in the church talk about sexuality and speak out to their community about the huge demand for prostitution. Statistics say that one in three Italian men purchase sexual services, one in three Italian men purchases sexual services at least once a year. So that's one out of three. When you're in the restaurant, you look around, you figure 33% of these men buy sexual services at least once a year, either on the street or in apartments, now a lot of the business is done over the internet. A man makes an appointment or finds a telephone number over the internet, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but our European Baptist Network is also um, getting strong enough that, for instance, I know the woman on the right who's Brazilian but lives in Switzerland. She and her husband minister to women who've been trafficked from Brazil into Switzerland. But when Emma told me that two Nigerian women had moved from Italy to Switzerland, I was able to say to her, forward this phone number of this woman who has a ministry in Switzerland uh, to these two Nigerian women, and if they want help getting off the street in Switzerland, here's a contact person there locally. So that's very exciting. I'll turn it back over to Jim. As I said, there's about 12, 10 to 12 million immigrants in Italy. About half of them are undocumented, and there are particular things about Italy that makes, people, that makes it very easy to live there as an undocumented immigrant. But the problem is that if, you're under, if you don't have documents, you can be persecuted, you can be exploited, and so immigrants in Italy uh, suffer a lot of exploitation and misuse. There's a lot of, um, of discrimination against immigrants. Italy, Italians are not accustomed to being around people who are not Italian. Sometimes they, they, it's inconceivable to them that someone does not speak Italian. They just, they, they don't met anybody who doesn't speak Italian. So, although Italy is, is a wealthy, western, industrialized democracy, many immigrants in Italy live as third world workers in a first world country. They live five, ten people to an apartment, they have to beg on the street. They get only the worst jobs. They do nothing but hard labor. Um, the, only, the only immigrants who can get documents are young men because that's all they want. Is they want people to pick up and move heavy things. And so many of these immigrants are, are well, college graduates, but they're you know they're lugging bags of cement, you know, eight ten hours a day, six days a week. So it's very it's very difficult. To, for immigrants, particularly African immigrants in, in Italy. So you may wonder, why, why do Italian Baptists care about these immigrants? There's a strong anti-immigrant sentiment in Italy, and there's, not, there's very little in this for Italian Baptists. Why do they care about these immigrants? Why do they make such an effort to reach out and include these churches and these people? Well, because they've read the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 7, beginning of verse 17. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords. The great God, mighty and awesome, who is not partial, takes no bribe, who executes justice for the orphan and the widow, and who loves 
the strangers, providing them food and clothing. You shall also love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. See, Italian map is telling that God judges a nation, and God judges a people on how they treat the most vulnerable among them. And Italian Baptists know that they are called by God to find the most vulnerable people in their country and to take those people, and that is the stranger. So Italian Baptists see this as an act of obedience. And when Paul talks in the New Testament about showing hospitality to strangers, he's not talking about being nice to your family or your friends, your neighbors. The word there literally means love of the stranger. Italian Baptists believe they are called by God to embrace these people. For them, it's simply an act of obedience. But more than that, they read Matthew 25. Remember when Jesus has a judgment of the sheep and the goats, and he says, I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was naked, you gave me clothing. Remember that story? At one point, he says, and I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. You see, here, we don't have God as the great host, like in the other parables. Here we have God as the guest. God is the stranger here. The Italian Baptists believe that when they reach out and welcome strangers into their country and into their community, they are welcoming God. They believe that they can find God in the stranger. And so there really is something in this for Italian Baptists. And including these immigrants in their lives and their churches, they believe they are revitalizing their churches. They believe that in a way they experience the visitation of God through these immigrants. And it's a great honor that they have invited us to work with them. And you, as a church, support us. You are a part of this ministry. You are partners with us in ministry. And so we don't want to finish today without saying to you, we want you to be aware of what you're participating in. We want you to be aware of what you are doing in Italy. We also want to say thanks to you for your faithfulness. Because you probably realized that what you do in your community is not that different from what we do in our community. You, as a congregation, welcome international students into your church. You have a ministry in Ohio State. And so what we do is not that different from what you do in your community. But we want to say thank you for supporting our ministry, and we want you to feel that you are full partners with us in all that we do. See, we provide places of refuge under the wings of God's grace, primarily because all of us have found refuge under the wings of God's grace. And we're simply inviting other people to live in the place that we found. How precious is your steadfast love of God. All people may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. That is the dream of Italian.